Hey everybody, Dr. Marshall Green here at TheAestheticFace.com. Here to talk with you today about a little issue we always have questions about in the practice. So we do um, four to six facelifts a month uh, at Coastal Aesthetic and, and in that um, we always have questions that come up in post-operative care. One of the ways I address that with my patients is, is if I'm operating on you, um, you're not leaving the office without my cell phone number. That means you're welcome to call the staff if you have a question, but you're always welcome to call me um, if you're in the post-surgical phase um, and, and you've got, got something you're just worried about, you, you just call me. It's easier for you to get it off your mind, to get in touch with me, um, and to make sure everything's going well. And almost always, it's absolutely nothing, but putting your mind at ease is just, it's really important to me as a surgeon in your post-operative care. Back to what we're going to talk about today is, is drain management. So when it comes to facelift surgery, which is, is hands down probably my favorite cosmetic surgery uh, procedure, um, something we always use is, is some type of drain. And uh, that patients envision all kinds of things when we talk about drains. So I'm going to kind of show you the two different types of drains that we use. Um, one barely even qualifies as a drain, uh, what we use in probably 99% of our facelifts. And the other is, is, is more of a true drain, and we use it very rarely. And I, I only use it in patients that have some propensity to bleeding or some concern of bleeding going into the surgery or during the surgery. And I kind of walk you through those. So the first type of drain that I'll typically use is nothing more than what's called an angiocatheter, okay? So this angiocatheter, it's really like a huge IV catheter, and then it comes off of a needle during the procedure, and all that's left is a tiny little drain um, like this, okay? And those drains will crisscross in the anterior part of the neck and just allow a tiny area of decompression of any kind of oozing or, or any kind of fluid that builds up after the procedure over the first night. Those are always covered up in some type of gauze or head, head wrap that I'll typically use after surgery, so you really don't even see them. There's no management that needs to occur. Occasionally patients will get worried because one of them will fall out. They're at home and they're moving around in bed the first night and one falls out. It's not a big deal. There's two in there. Um, we, we leave them in there overnight and they'll take those out at your first follow-up visit 24 hours after surgery um, after we make sure you've done well through the first night. So once again, that's the, the one I use 99% of the time. That tiny little angiocatheter drain sits right under the neck. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip over here to a PowerPoint slide and just show you what it looks like in surgery, what it looks like under the wrap. If you're one of my patients watching this right now, kind of trying to figure out what it looks like underneath the, the dressing. This is what it looks like, okay? And the slide you're looking at here, there's two angiocatheters crisscrossing over one another. This just allows for fluid to leak out into that dressing, into that, into that area of the gauze. It might look a little pink over the first night in the, in the dressing. We'll take that down in the morning after your first surgical video if you're at one of my patients at home watching this right now. Okay. So that's our 99% our of the time drain. The second type of drain we're gonna use, I'm gonna show you is more of a true drain. Um, it's a very small drain. What this is, is a, a little drain catheter that we slip underneath the facelift flap. And when I typically put this in, it'll come out way back here behind the patient's hairline, the most posterior aspect of, uh, of the approach to the facelift. That way the patient's not really seeing it, you're not worried about it, it doesn't bother you all the time. And what happens is that sits on this little, this little tube here. So I got a little demonstration, that's what this bucket is down here, and it's colored red for a purpose. Hopefully, hopefully that's not too scary for you, um, just for demonstration purposes here. So that, that, that tube sits down in some fluid, okay? And what happens is there's a small little test tube, and it has a small container that it sits in. And then this will be connected um, while you're in recovery or before you even go to recovery. And then this little thing just kind of sits in here. And this will drain anything that comes, uh, any fluid that's accumulating in the face of the flap or any areas that we're worried about there. And so usually one of these tubes will last the patient the first 24 hours. Rarely do they fill up. However, when they do fill up, we'll, we'll provide you with a second tube. And you as the patient at home just pop off the first tube. It'll just wiggle right off the container. All right, and then I have a lot of fluid in here, so it will fill right up. These are vacuum tubes. You'll connect the second tube. You see it's going to fill up here for us because I have a whole, a whole vat of fluid. That's essentially how these work. Very low maintenance, um, not a lot for you to do. But like I said at the very beginning, if you're at home, you're one of our post-surgical patients, you're figuring out what to do with your drains, don't fret. Just give me a call. You have my cell phone number. Um, if you're a patient out there from another surgeon, post-op, we're trying to figure out drains. These are the drains that I use. Um, the drain that your surgeon might have used might be a little different. Anyway, thanks for checking us out today. Once again, TheAestheticFace.com, Dr. Marshall Green. Really appreciate you checking out our video. Give us a shout if you have questions.